This video is designed to give an overview of the process for fit testing individuals for the use of the N95 respirator. Please pay special attention to all the steps you'll need to complete. The safety of your workers and the people you take care of is at stake. Why wear a respirator? Respirators are designed to reduce an individual's exposure to airborne contaminants, such as particles, gases, or vapors. An air purifying respirator accomplishes this by filtering contaminants out of the air before they can be inhaled by the person wearing the respirator. The type of respirator commonly found in a healthcare setting is the filtering face piece respirator, often referred to as N95 respirator. This type of respirator is designed to protect against particulate hazards such as airborne biological agents like bacteria or viruses. To assure consistent performance, a respirator's filtering efficiency is tested by the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health NIOSH. Remember, only a respirator that has been approved by NIOSH as being an N95 or above is acceptable for use by a healthcare worker as part of your respiratory protection program. For additional information, go to the website listed here. Different types of respirators. Yes, the most common types are the N95 respirator, the elastomeric face piece respirator, and the powered air purifying respirator, more commonly known as PAPR. Each respirator provides protection for the healthcare worker and may be applicable in different situations. Fit test preparation. In this section, we will instruct you on the elements and steps you need to take to prepare for wearing a N95 respirator and fit testing. An extremely important aspect of respiratory protection and fit test programs is the documentation of medical clearance, training, and fit testing. Keep accurate and up-to-date records for all procedures, trainings, testing, and outcomes. Medical evaluation. Before you can fit test or wear an N95 respirator, you must have medical clearance. This medical clearance assures that you have the ability to use an N95 respirator without endangering yourself. Some medical issues that may occur as a result of wearing an N95 respirator are less airflow to wear, increased CO2, heat effects, claustrophobia, limited communication, each potential wearer must complete a confidential medical questionnaire and have it evaluated and approved by a physician or other licensed healthcare professional. If after review, the physician or other licensed healthcare professional decides it is appropriate, the employee might receive further medical evaluation to determine if the employee is physically and psychologically able to perform the assigned work while wearing respiratory protective equipment. Again, the medical evaluation must be a confidential document and should be seen only by the physician or other licensed healthcare professional. It should be kept in the employee's medical file, not their personnel file. The OSHA Medical Clearance Questionnaire for the use of N95 respirators can be found at Appendix C to Section 1910.134, OSHA Respirator Medical Evaluation Questionnaire. Respirator training. As part of your company's respiratory protection program, training must be provided to the individuals who wear the N95 respirators. This training includes information on respirator, fit, usage, limitations, malfunctions, maintenance, inspection, and storage. Additionally, training should include donning, putting on, doffing, removing, seal check procedures, Remember to document and record the trainings that have been provided to the individuals who will be using a respirator. Donning and doffing. Donning, putting on a respirator, and doffing, taking off a respirator, is an important part of the respiratory protection process. Correctly donning and doffing the respirator will maximize the effectiveness of the respirator. Before handling a respirator, you should wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. Prior to putting on a respirator, whether brand new or used, you need to inspect the respirator for damage or defect. If the respirator is damaged or defective in any way, do not use the respirator. Throw it away and get another one. 
If a respirator is damaged or becomes hard to breathe through while you are wearing it, immediately leave the contaminated area, throw it away, and get another respirator. Donning your respirator. The following basic steps can be used to don most N95 respirators. Cup the respirator in the palm of your hand with the nose piece at your fingertips, the straps hanging freely over your hand. Position the respirator under your chin with the nose piece up over your nose and mouth. Pull the top strap over your head, resting it high in the back top of your head. The straps should go under eyewear of any kind. Pull the bottom strap over your head and place it on your neck below your ears. Make sure that the straps are not twisted. The straps should go under any long hair and rest on your neck, not on your hair. Be aware that the straps are not over earrings or other jewelry. Do not crisscross straps as that will diminish the effectiveness of the respirator. Now take the fingers of both hands and put them at the top of the middle nose piece. Using the fingers of both hands, mold the nose piece to the shape of your nose by pushing inwards while moving your hands down both sides of the nose piece. Pinching the nose piece with one hand may result in an improper fit and less effective respirator performance. Be sure to use both hands. User Seal Check Now is the time to perform a user seal check on the respirator you have just donned. This seal check helps to assure that the respirator is properly seated on your face. Do this every time you don a respirator, whether it is new or used. For non-valve respirators, place both hands completely over the respirator and exhale. The respirator should bulge slightly. If air leaks around the nose, readjust the nose piece. If air leaks on the sides of the respirator, work the straps back along the sides of your head. Repeat the user seal check and adjustments as needed. For a valve respirator, place both hands completely over the respirator and inhale sharply. The respirator should collapse slightly. If air leaks around the nose or sides, adjust as you would for a non-valve respirator. Repeat the user seal check and adjustments as needed. If you have any difficulty getting the respirator to fit, review the manufacturer's instructions that are included with the respirator. Never enter a contaminated area if your respirator doesn't seal properly. Doffing your respirator. Try to avoid touching the front of the respirator, it will likely be contaminated. Grab the bottom strap from on the back of your neck and bring it over your head to the front. Let it hang loosely. Then, grab the top strap from the back of your head and bring over your head to the front. The respirator should release from your face. If you must touch the front of the respirator, wash your hands immediately with disinfecting soap or a hand sanitizer. Disposing of respirators. Now that you have used a respirator and taken it off, what should you do with it? Most N95 face piece respirators used in a medical setting are disposable. In fact, they are made to be disposed or after their use by a healthcare worker. A healthcare worker can use an N95 respirator while attending to different patients or residents as long as the respirator is not removed. When you remove the respirator, you should dispose of it. If there is a situation where the availability of respirators is limited, there are procedures for storing and reusing respirators. Check with your local or state Department of Public Health for information. Fit Testing When you have employees, use a respirator. You must assure that the respirator fits properly. The proper fit of a respirator must be confirmed with a fit test before you wear the respirator in a contaminated atmosphere. This must be done for all tight-fitting face pieces, including the N95 respirator. Fit test kits can be purchased from manufacturers of respirators or from safety product suppliers. These kits will include all the materials you will need to perform the testing of the N95 respirators, including the step-by-step -step instructions that will be discussed later in this video. Check your local area for suppliers or go on the internet and search respirator fit test kits. There are two methods of fit testing N95 respirators, qualitative and quantitative. This video explains the procedures for the qualitative fit testing. The qualitative process uses a mist test agent. The test agent Saccharin has a sweet taste. The test agent Bittrex has a bitter taste. Both test agents use the same process to test the proper fitting. The qualitative fit test must be repeated at least once a year to ensure that the respirator continues to fit properly. 
If an employee changes the respirator that they are or will be using, they must be fit tested for the new respirator. If your respirator does not fit well enough to pass this test, you will need to refit or readjust your respirator or select another respirator size, style, or model and conduct the fit test again. Because this is a taste test, the individual being tested should not have eaten, had something to drink other than water, or chew gum for 15 minutes before the test. There are two main sections when performing the fit testing, the sensitivity test and actual fit test. Sensitivity test. The first section is a sensitivity check. It establishes the wearer's ability to taste the test agent. You do not wear your respirator for this step. Place the hood over your head. It should be positioned so there is about six inches between your face and the hood window. This will allow free movement of your head. The individual should breathe with his or her mouth open and tongue slightly out. When the individual tastes the test agent, they should let you know immediately. Using a nebulizer containing the sensitivity test agent, the instructor will spray 10 squeezes rapidly into the hood. Make sure that you spray the nebulizer into the hood at an angle and not directly at the individual's face. Give the individual about 10 to 15 seconds to experience the test agent. As soon as the individual tells you that they can taste the test agent, stop spraying the nebulizer. If the person tastes the test agent within the first 10 sprays, you will record the sensitivity as 10. If they haven't tasted the test agent within the first 10 sprays, add an additional 10 sprays into the hood. If the individual now tastes the test agent, you will record their sensitivity as 20. If the individual has not yet tasted the test agent, add an additional 10 sprays into the test hood. If the individual now tastes the test agent, you should record their sensitivity as 30. If they still cannot taste the test agent after 30 squeezes, the test is over and you can't be tested using this material. After the sensitivity level has been determined at 10, 20, or 30 sprays or squeezes, remove the hood. Wait a few minutes before continuing so that the individual can clear the taste from their mouth. The individual may want to rinse their mouth with a small amount of water during this period. Fit test. Now that the sensitivity section of the process has been completed, we can move on to the respirator fit test section. Have the individual put on their respirator, following the proper instructions as learned earlier, including a user seal check. The instructor should put the test hood on the individual. The hood window should be six inches from the individual's face. Now using a second nebulizer with the fit test solution, the instructor will spray the test agent into the hood. The instructor will use the number of sprays recorded during the sensitivity test, 10, 20, or 30. At 30 second intervals thereafter, the instructor should refresh the test agent by spraying half the number of sprays used at the beginning of the fit test, 5, 10, or 15 sprays. The individual should continue to breathe through their mouth during this entire process, including the exercises to follow. The individual should perform the following exercises for 60 seconds each. Remember to refresh the test agent every 30 seconds. Breathe normally. Breathe deeply and regularly. Turn your head from side to side, stopping at each side for a breath. Nod your head up and down, holding at each position for a couple of breaths. Talk. Read the rainbow passage slowly out loud. Bend over, bend at the waist as if touching your toes. Be sure to hold on to the test hood to keep it in place as you bend over. You may substitute jogging in place for this exercise. Breathe normally again. If at any time during the exercises, the individual detects the same taste as experienced during the sensitivity solution section, discontinue the fit test. The respirator is not functioning properly. You must readjust your respirator or select a different size or style of respirator. Once you clear the taste from your mouth, you can repeat this fit test section. If you have completed the exercises without tasting the test agent, the respirator fits you properly. This video has been designed to give an overview of the process for fit testing individuals for use of the N95 respirator. For specific information on regulations and procedures, go to the OSHA Federal Standard 29 CFR 1910.134 Respiratory Protection Section 5144. The safety of your workers and the people you take care of is at stake.